Hello and welcome to another episode of The Bible is Right. I'm Dwayne Matthews, one of the many members of the evangelism ministry team here at the Quince Church of Christ, located in Memphis, Tennessee, where Brother Nicomas Rogers is the minister and Brother Graylin Freeman is the associate minister. As a group of believers, we maintain that the Bible is the primary authority for all religious instruction. And we also believe that it contains all the answers that we seek and we truly believe that the Bible is right. We're always concerned with what the Bible says, but more importantly, we're concerned with what the Bible teaches. And today, as we will each week, we'll pose a question to our associate minister, Brother Freeman, who is here with us to help us see exactly what the Bible teaches. Brother Freeman, in Acts chapter one, verses four and five, it reads, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, for ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Hmm. Brother Freeman, the question is, based on these scriptures, are we baptized in or with the Holy Ghost in today's time? Well, I tell you, Brother Matthews, that is a question of great confusion within religious circles and spiritual circles. And it derives from those who have a genuine desire to experience a profound relationship with the Lord. But they're of a mindset that they must have had to have had some kind of supernatural encounter with the divine, some tangible, some mystical aspect, something akin to the encounter that Saul had, Saul of Tarsus, before his conversion on that Damascus road. If you call reading in the book of Acts chapter 9, he was a man uh, whom the Lord chose, selected to be a chosen vessel unto him. He had received letters of authority from the high priest. He had made havoc of the church there in Jerusalem. These letters of authority that he had to go into the city of Damascus he was of a mindset that said if he found any of that way, he would bring them back bound to Jerusalem. Well, on that road, the Bible teaches us that the Lord met him. A light shined round about him, brighter than the noonday sun, drove him to his knees. He heard a voice saying from the light, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Saul said, who art thou, Lord, and what would you have me to do? Jesus told him, it is Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks, but arise, go into the city of Damascus, and there it will be told you what you must do. The Lord appeared to a preacher by the name of Ananias. Ananias came to Saul and preached the gospel to him. In Acts 22 and verse 16, the Bible says, and now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, wash away thy sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. So we see that Paul obeyed the gospel, but his initial conversion, his encounter with Jesus is such that individuals believe that they want to duplicate something like that. They want this tangible, uh, highly satisfying, supernatural encounter with the Lord. But I'm going to tell you something, the simplistic truth in studying and learning about God's plan of salvation, his scheme of redemption, my friends, it is far more gratifying, far more satisfying in examining those passages of scripture that you read from Acts chapter one, verses four and five. Okay. In studying and learning about God's scheme of redemption and the plan of salvation there, when we perform an accurate exegesis, and exegesis is just a $10 word uh, that means breaking the verse down, breaking the verse down by scrutinizing the words of the text and holding the text in its contextual setting. To exegete literally means to extract from a passage of scripture what the intent of the author was. What is the author trying to convey in the verses? So when we engage in a thorough examination and a study of these verses, what we're gonna conclude is that we'll derive that the Holy Spirit baptism was promised exclusively to the apostles. And then later, he was miraculously poured out upon the household of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10 as proof to the stiff-necked Jews that the gospel was for the Gentiles as well, ultimately to all of mankind. So 
when we take the verses in their contextual setting, if we take it out of its context, then it becomes a pretext. And a pretext, as we know, is something or anything that is put forward to conceal a true purpose or an object. Holy Spirit baptism, Brother Matthews, it is supernatural in its nature, okay. specific in its structure. Now, in order for us to determine whether or not something is derived from God, coming from God by way of his word, we must look for four particular attributes, four particular truisms, and that is purpose, order, design, and structure. Purpose, order, design, and structure. We'd have to ask ourselves the question, what, is an, what was the purpose of Holy Spirit baptism? What, what purpose did it serve? What is its design and, and how do we recognize its overall structure and its order as is revealed in the scripture? Well, let's examine Acts chapter one and we'll come to a better understanding of exactly who Jesus is referencing as the recipients of Holy Spirit baptism. In order for us to keep the context of verses four and five where the question is derived, Let's go to Acts chapter one and begin at verse number one. And we'll read there that the Bible says the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them and speaking of the being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Here's verse four. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the father, which saith, he, ye have heard of me for John truly baptized with water, but ye should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. Now, one of our first observations is to see that there is a distinction between water baptism and Holy Spirit baptism. Yes. John baptized with water, but Jesus says, ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, in examining that passage of scripture, if we follow the basic fundamentals of rudimentary English, that is syntax, uh, th that's how a sentence is structured, how a sentence is put together, following the nouns and the pronouns. Remembering that a pronoun always takes the place of a noun. And in any passage, any verse, you can identify the pronoun by tracing back to the preceding noun. The antecedent to the pronoun will be the preceding noun, whatever the noun was. That is the pronoun. So based upon this fundamental truth of grammar, let's re-examine those passages of scripture again. Look at verse number one of Acts chapter one. The former treaties have I made of thee, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them, them who? Them the apostles, 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, them who? Them the apostles commanded them, them who? The apostles, that they, they who? The apostles should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith, Ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye, ye who, the apostles, shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So when we follow those fundamental truths of English grammar, we must conclude that only the apostles were promised the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, let's discover when did the apostles actually receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? In Acts chapter 1 and verse number 13, the Bible identifies the 11 apostles. And then it goes on to say that there were 120 disciples who had assembled with them. And it was from this group, from this number of 120 disciples, that they were going to select a new apostle to take the place of Judas, 
who had betrayed the Lord and then had hanged himself. The apostles noted, Brother Duane, and let's not miss this, that there were certain qualifications in order to be an apostle. And this is very, very important because there are those today who believe that they are apostles, similar to the apostles that we read about here in Acts chapter 1 and verse number 11 through 13. Well, let's see if there are individuals today who can meet the qualifications in order to be an apostle. They had 120 to choose from. The apostles noted certain specific qualifications, and it's relevant because only the apostles were going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, here are the qualifications. First and foremost, according to verse number 22, you would have had to have been baptized by John the Baptist. Verse 22 of Acts chapter 1. You'd have had to have been with Jesus during his personal ministry. Verse 21 of that same chapter. That is to say, had been with Jesus in his comings and goings, when he was raising the dead, when he was healing the sick, when he was preaching his word. Uh, uh, the last qualification, you would have had to have been a witness of Jesus after his resurrection. Verse number 22. Now, of those qualifications, and those were the qualifications, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Right. And according to these verses, of the 120 disciples that they had to choose from, they only found two, two individuals who met all of those qualifications. Verse 23 of Acts chapter 1 says, Joseph called Barsabas, whose surname was Justice, and Matthias. The apostles, they cast lots. They prayed. They asked the Lord to guide their hand in the proper selection of who should take the place of Judas. And having done so, look at what verse 26 of the text says. And they gave forth their lots and the lot fell upon Matthias and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Now, let's not miss this. Verse 26, the last verse in Acts chapter one identifies that Matthias was numbered with the 11 apostles. Let's go on to read Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. Remember, we're trying to ascertain when did the apostles actually receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they, they who? Well, what is the antecedent to they? What is the last noun to this pronoun? We go back to verse 26. The last noun before this pronoun is the apostles. And when they gave forth their lots, the lot fell upon Matthias and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Look at verse number one of Acts chapter two. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they, they who, they the apostles were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they, they who, the apostles were sitting and there appeared unto them, them who, the apostles, cloven tongues like as a fire. It sat upon each of them, them who, the apostles, and they, they who, the apostles were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them, them who, the apostles. We must conclude, Brother Matthews, and it is clear that only the apostles were promised the Holy Spirit baptism and only the apostles received Holy Spirit baptism. Now, Amen. Amen. this last thought, what was the design and the structure of Holy Spirit baptism? Well, you see, the Lord was establishing the church on this first day of Pentecost. He was fulfilling prophecy that the church would begin in Jerusalem. The apostles were the inaugural or the charter members, if you will, of the church of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 28 teaches us that God set some in the church first apostles. He set them in through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The apostles were set in the church. They weren't baptized in water like you and I and everyone else has to be. They were set in the church by the Holy Spirit. When the apostle Peter stood up to preach the first gospel sermon on that Lord's Day, they that gladly received his word were baptized. Baptized in what? Baptized in water. See, the Bible teaches in Acts 2 and verse 41 
and they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Added unto who? Verse 47 says, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added unto the church daily such as should be saved. You see, Holy Spirit baptism had a specific purpose, a specific design, order, and a structure. It ushered in the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Later on, in Acts chapter 10, he was poured out on the household of Cornelius to prove again, as I said, to the Jews that the Gentiles were worthy to hear the gospel, to receive the message of faith, surrender their will to God's will, and sub subsequently become God's children. And it must be noted, Dwayne, that even when the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the household of Cornelius, he was not poured out to save them from their sins or to remit them from their sins or to abrogate their sins or to wash their sins away. Because after the Holy Spirit had been poured out upon the household of Cornelius, we note Peter says, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Ghost as well as we at the beginning? You see, Peter hearkened back to the fact that the church of Christ started with the Holy Spirit miraculously. It started miraculously again for the household of Cornelius to prove to the Jews that the gospel was a worthy message to be given to the Gentile community. No, my friends, the Bible is right. Amen. We are not baptized in the Holy Ghost today. The Bible teaches emphatically in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 5, there is one baptism. That one baptism is water baptism which according to 1 Corinthians 12 and verse number 13, places one in the body, which according to Galatians 3, 26 and 27, places one into Christ. This last scripture, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 20 and 21, which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that his eight souls were saved by water, the like figure whereunto even baptism doth now also save us. We'd ask Peter the question, Dwayne, Peter, what will baptism do? Save. Who will it save? Us. When will it save? Now. Baptism doth now also save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but an answer of a good conscience towards God. Water baptism is not designed to wash the dirt from your body. It's designed so that you can contact the precious blood of Jesus and the blood of Jesus in the watery grave of baptism washes your sins away at the same time, adding you to the body of Christ, yes. the church that we can read about in the Bible. We're not to look for Holy Spirit baptism, Holy Ghost baptism. That was promised to the apostles to lead them, to guide them in writing of the word of God and to establish the church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We invite you to study with us the things contained in God's book divine. Please meet with myself or our ministering evangelist, Brother Rogers. It would be our great honor to sit down and talk with you about the things contained in God's book. We strive to follow the principles and the precepts the statutes and the judgments of God Almighty surrendering our will to his will. Let me encourage, let us always in all things keep the faith till the last amen. Well, thank you, Brother Freeman. We truly appreciate that in-depth explanation for, that, for this week's uh, question. Also, we ask that you will stay tuned each Monday as this broadcast will air at 9 a.m. on Monday mornings. Also, Check out the Quince Church of Christ Facebook, YouTube, and websites, not only for this broadcast, but for the weekly inspirational message that airs on Wednesday evening from our minister, Brother Rogers. Also, his dynamic sermons are live streamed every Sunday morning at 10.15 a.m. Central Standard Time. Mm -hmm. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time at the Quince Church of Christ.